Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NAFLD, is a liver disease that is not related to ethanol use that involves hepatic fatty infiltration. In this lesson, we're going to talk about why this happens, what are some of the risk factors, and we're also going to talk about the signs and symptoms of this condition and what we can do to manage and treat it. So again, it's a liver disease that involves hepatic fatty infiltration that is not related to alcohol. It is a spectrum of macrovascular hepatic steatosis that eventually leads to inflammation and eventual fibrosis. So essentially, the liver starts to build up fatty deposits. Eventually, it leads to inflammation of the liver. It's an infiltrate and the inflammation over long, long periods of time can lead to scar tissue or fibrosis. The etiology of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is essentially insulin resistance. So I'm going to talk briefly about insulin resistance and why this happens in the liver. So here is a cell that has an insulin receptor and there is glucose that needs to enter the cell. We need insulin to activate the insulin receptor and allow the glucose to enter the cell. But in a state of insulin resistance, that doesn't work. The insulin receptor doesn't work properly. We can't get the glucose in the cell like we need it to. What happens is glucose starts to increase. Insulin starts to increase. We become hyperinsulinemic. And these have a couple of different things that happen. The hyperinsulinemic state actually leads to activated or increased lipogenesis in the liver. Essentially, the liver will take that higher level of glucose and essentially convert it into fat. And because this is happening at a higher level, the fat is essentially abnormal. That fat making process becomes aberrant. It leads to fatty deposits in the liver. And this is how we actually get this disease in a simple way of describing it. The risk factors all are associated with insulin resistance. The risk factors for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease include the following. Metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, so something with insulin resistance. Both of those have insulin resistance. Hypertension is also associated. Dyslipidemia, you can imagine if there's lots of higher levels of fats in the blood, you can assume that the liver is making them and that there's an associated risk due to that. And what is interesting is that rapid changes in weight, including weight gain or weight loss, can lead to this condition as well. And we're going to discuss this later in the lesson as well. So what is the pathogenesis and progression of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? So if we have a normal liver, over time with insulin resistance, if it's brewing, it really hasn't come to the attention of a clinician. We can see there's some minimal fatty infiltrate and it leads to some acute hepatitis. A hepatitis is, itis means inflammation and hepat or hep, hepato means liver. It's inflammation of the liver. So it's an acute inflammation of the liver due to something getting inside the liver that really isn't supposed to be there. So you see this low level inflammation of the liver. If this continues to go on over time, the fat can continue to accumulate and it can continue to infiltrate into the fat or into the liver tissue. And this essentially can have a prolonged and chronic level of liver inflammation. And that's not good because what happens is over time, if this can go on for years and years and years and a long, long time, that inflammation can lead to scar tissue in the liver. And essentially scar tissue in the liver is cirrhosis. So this is a simplistic look at the progression of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, but it's important to understand because it can lead to some significant morbidity later on in life like cirrhosis. So what are some of the signs and symptoms of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? What can we do to maybe come to the attention of our clinicians or have started some treatment for it? Well, unfortunately, a lot of times this is a mostly asymptomatic condition. So a lot of times people just go on with their lives and don't realize that they have this. 
But when there are symptoms, they are often vague, and that doesn't help either. We a lot of times can see malaise, so people can feel very tired, very fatigued. They can have right upper quadrant discomfort, so what we describe as a gnawing or aching kind of sensation. And that can be something that can clue you into this condition. So again, most of the time it's asymptomatic, so it's not easy to pick up just simply by the symptoms. But when there are symptoms, they can be vague. And so that can be difficult to detect as well. It can be just some fatigue, some malaise. But what can really kind of maybe clue you in on this is the right upper quadrant discomfort or the gnawing or aching sensation that they get in their right upper quadrant. So what are some of the investigations of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? The laboratory investigations include hypertriglyceridemia, hypercholesterolemia, so essentially the liver's making a lot of fats. You're going to see that in the blood, that dyslipidemia that we talked about before. So you can, can see that in the blood. You may also see some indications of insulin resistance. We did talk that the main cause of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is insulin resistance. So you might see an elevated A1C, you might see elevated fasting glucose, so different parameters of insulin resistance might be aberrant as well. You may also see liver enzymes being elevated. If there is hepatitis, you can start to see some elevated AST and ALT. And generally speaking, that ratio, if you were to take AST to ALT ratio, that's going to be less than one. So it's a very mild underlying inflammation of the liver. And you might also see elevated IgM as well. So these are some of the laboratory investigations you may see with an individual with non-alcohol fatty liver disease. They may have dyslipidemia, they may have some insulin resistance, they might have some elevated liver enzymes and elevated IgM. So this may help you clue in on non-alcoholic fatty liver disease as well. What's really gonna help you is imaging. And it's a right upper quadrant ultrasound that you wanna do. And what you're gonna see in a right upper quadrant ultrasound is a hyper echogenic liver. So I would encourage you to look on the internet, look at images of a normal liver and a hyper echogenic fatty liver and you can see the differences there. So essentially, the hyper-echogenic liver is going to be essentially echogenic. More e There's going to be more echogenicity on a right upper quadrant ultrasound. So for the treatment of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, if we can say, you know what, this patient does have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, we've seen it on imaging, we've seen the laboratory investigations, what can we do to treat it? Treatment involves weight loss, and this makes sense because a lot of the risk factors and etiology, the insulin resistance, can all have to do with obesity and diabetes, and this is something we can target specifically. And we want to do what we call a gradual weight loss. We want to lose 0.5 to 1 kilogram per week. That is the goal for treatment for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Because a rapid weight loss can actually worsen non-alcohol fatty liver disease. Remember, that was one of the risk factors. Rapid changes in weight can actually make this worse, can actually increase your risk for this condition. And the goal for treatment of this condition is you want to lose at least 10% of your body weight. And another thing is you want to refrain from ethanol use. Because there is an underlying inflammation of the liver already, you don't want to add any more problems to it. And there are other treatments as well that show some evidence of benefit. This includes vitamin D. So taking a vitamin D supplement can also maybe of some help in treating or reducing the progression of non-alcohol fatty liver disease. Vitamin E, 800 units, has been shown, especially if there is hepatic inflammation involved. And even coffee drinking. So drinking three cups of coffee per day can actually help treat or reduce the progression of this condition. So very interesting that gradual weight loss is the treatment. You don't want to lose too much weight too quickly and you want to lose at least 10% of your body weight. But what's even more interesting is that you can use vitamin D, you can use vitamin E, and you can even drink more coffee to help you with this condition as well. So a lot of this lesson has been on why this condition occurs, and how we can detect it. It can be difficult to detect sometimes, but when we do detect it, we can use these 
lifestyle modification type of treatments. Gradual weight loss and refraining from alcohol and some supplements, vitamin D, vitamin E, and we can even drink some more coffee that can help as well. So if you want to learn more about other conditions, please check out my other lessons as well. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.